Hi everyone, this is Chris Kimball. Welcome to Your Daily Five. Today is February the 10th, 2021. I want to talk about a couple of things and uh, uh, some of the topics today. Gold uh, Could gold be flat uh, to down for years to come? Why would somebody say that? Could stocks be facing the same situation? And I want to share a, a key leadership uh, ratio in the tech sector is testing 14 year support and why you ought to be uh, watching that. But one of the things I want to remind uh, people of is, you know, this is the Nautilus shell and it has the repeating pattern. I'm from Kansas. And so the same mathematics that are in the Nautilus shell are in the Kansas sunflower. They're also in a, a low pressure system that's 30,000 feet above the earth. Also, when you look light years away in the galaxy is the same pattern and, and lo and behold, there's been the, the same pattern in our president's you know, haircut. So today's gonna be a focus on using these repeating patterns of mathematics in, in long-term charts. And so this is a chart of uh, gold, uh, looking back clear to uh, the late 70s. And obviously uh, you can see from uh, essentially 2000, call it the Y2K timeframe, that, I mean, this trend is up in gold. I mean, it's just strong as could be. I didn't apply it, but you could just imagine that it's above sh you know, short, medium, and long-term moving averages. If we looked at RSI, momentum, it's, it's all really good. You know, So at that, when this chart uh, it was made uh, on September the 1st, just, uh, gold, I know that's 10 years ago, but it was trading at $1,828. And so do you see anything here in this chart that would suggest that gold would be flat to down for years to come? You know, and would it be foolish to suggest so? So I wanna go back to a, a post that I made uh, on September the 1st of 2011. And this was the headline on our blog. And it says the Swiss franc is suggesting that gold would be flat to down for years to come. And will it be different this time? And so there was two different keys that gave me either the stupidity or confidence to go and, and share this, uh, this blog post. And uh, one of them was the Swiss franc, and it's this top chart with gold overlaid down below. And the bottom line is, is that when the Swiss franc had hit this rising resistance level, for whatever reason, where these red arrows were, gold was down for years to come. And so this was this rally that we just looked at on the prior chart. And you could see that the Swiss franc was up against 30 year resistance and, and making a massive bearish reversal pattern. And so that was one of the pieces that made me confident that maybe if history would repeat itself and if it wasn't different this time, maybe gold would struggle for many, many years to come. And I know on social media, it was uh, the popularity wasn't then what it is now, but uh, Understandably, I was thrown under the bus by the gold bulls and I don't you know, blame them you know, whatsoever, but I wanna kind of update another reason why the pattern suggested this. So here's, here again is that price point when I made that suggestion that gold could be flat to down for years to come. And what I did is I applied Fibonacci to the 1980 high. Some people associate that with the Hunt brothers situation you know, with silver, but the bottom line, there was this high here in 1980 and then the low in 1999 applied Fibonacci. And at the same time, the franc was testing this resistance. So was uh, gold testing this 261 Fibonacci level. And that's where we said gold could be flat to down for years, ten, for years to come. And so here we are in the price action now the following 10 years. So here we are on February the 10th, 2021, a decade later, Gold was 1,828 an ounce then, and it's 1,836 an ounce now. So pretty much the same price. So, uh, and there would happen to be almost a 50% dip, you know, in between. So if you were unfortunate and you bought gold then, it's been dead money for 10 years. So, kind of, we're going to now turn to stocks. And I, I saw this cartoon that I, I just wanted to throw in today. And so you see Peter Pan saying. I'm taking you to a magical never, never land that is unaffected by events in the real world. And the little boy says, oh boy, we're going to Wall Street. So I wanna now update in the similar vein to gold, just trying to do the same thing with the S&P. So we applied Fibonacci to the uh, 1974 Nixon impeachment low, and then we applied it to, and this is a quarterly chart. And if you can believe this or not, that the S&P, the 2000 and the 2007 quarterly highs were at the exact same level. So I applied Fibonacci to, again, the 74 low, the 2000 and 2007 highs. And lo and behold, the S&P is testing 
a long-term Fibonacci extension level right now, similar to what gold was doing after a, a great run 10 years ago. So is the S&P the only one testing a, a really long-term Fib level that's important? And the answer would be no. This is the Dow on a quarterly basis going back to 1909. And you can see it's uh, obviously in a bull trend. There's above moving averages, there's strength all over the place. But I applied Fibonacci to the 74 lows, but then I flipped it around and applied Fibonacci then to the 2003 and the 2009 lows. And you can see that the Dow is testing its 423 Fibonacci extension level at the top of this 70 year rising channel. So Fibonacci was important to, um, to gold. Possibility could be important to stocks. And so um, right now, if there was you know, one chart that uh, there was only one chart, I was on a deserted island to see how the market was doing. This would be the chart I'd look at. And this is the advanced decline line hitting all time high. So right now there's nothing negative coming from, to me, my favorite chart you know, on the planet. Uh, if the if the market would start selling off at these FIB levels and would break this uh, rising support, you know, here, then the AD line would send something of concern. But right now, the uh, AD line suggesting that these FIB levels will be taken out to the upside. And if that's accomplished, that's extremely bullish. Something I want to make you aware of, this is the NASDAQ 100 ratio, or the NASDAQ 100 divided by the NASDAQ composite index, which is about 2,500 stocks. And you can see it's in a 15 year uptrend. So great messages from leadership coming from this sector. But two things that stick out to me that I want you to look back on the dot com highs. This red horizontal line was the 2000 intra month high. And then the blue line was the 2000 monthly closing high. So if you go over here recently, six months ago, the ratio tagged for the second time the 2000 intra month highs and now it's faded for six months and now it's testing what two levels the 2000 high as monthly closing high as support and also the 15 year rising line as support and support as we all know is support until broken but with these key fibonacci levels in play they could come in to to suggest an important high could be taking place if we see this leadership breaks support. And so not only is um, that key um, tech ratio testing uh, several key support levels, so is the semiconductor ETF. And you know, a lot of people talk about, this is the leader of all leaders to pay attention to. This is the brains of the computer industry. And so why not apply long-term Fibonacci to the brains you know, of our computer and our tech industry? So it didn't do anything fancy here. We went and applied uh, Fibonacci to the 2000 highs and then the financial crisis lows. And lo and behold, look where the semiconductor index is right now. It's testing a, uh, a what? A 12 year Fibonacci extension level. It's a 261 level uh, right up here currently. So what were my whole intent today was no different than to make you aware of how these long-term Fibonacci's impacted gold and the huge tests that we're seeing in Fibonacci extension levels in these key markets, you know, as well. So as we finish up here, we saw why gold could be flat to down for years to come and, you know, why I said that. Now we, the question is, could stocks be facing the same situation? Well, if they break above those extension levels, you know, to me, the answer would be no, and especially with the way the advanced decline line is. But I want to make you aware that we're really at some key price points that we would, that the bullish case would not want to see selling to get started there. And we also see that leadership is testing a key 14 year support line. So if you have the ability, keep your eye on the NDX NASDAQ composite ratio. So I want to thank you for your time. Uh, again, uh, it's always an honor to be on your daily five. Uh, we do offer a 40% uh, discount on our normal rates to stock chart viewers by going to KimballChartingSolutions.com forward slash stock charts. Thank you, everybody. See you soon. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.